Hey guys, Matt Dederick here, and thanks for joining me on another astrophotography video. Now, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe because it definitely helps out a lot showing your support. Now, it's been a while since I've sat at the desk and actually filmed a video, but I got back from Chile and I was doing some work down there installing some telescopes and I had some new equipment to test for some of the nightscape photography that I like doing. And one of them was this Nissi. It's the star soft filter. So it gives you the nice large stars that kind of really makes them prominent in your image. And I was shooting with their V6 holder and that's what's seen here. So pretty good machining on this. And I just have the little adapter because I was shooting with my Sony 24 millimeter lens and all you have to do is thread this on with your little adapter for your exact lens and then that just seats right into the holder itself so just threads on I have the filter in already and you can really see already if you just get at an angle with any kind of light source you can kind of see this modeling effect on the filter so that Nissi label needs to be up at the top and what you'll do is of course just slide it into your filter holder and then attach it to the lens that you're shooting with. So I was shooting with a modified Sony a7S III and I was using a 24 millimeter lens. This is the 50 millimeter lens. You can always get a little stop down ring just to let it attach to different lenses. But with the 24 millimeter lens, it worked pretty darn good. I was doing a couple different fields of view. Now one of them was aimed at just a deep sky area around Orion for all the nebulosity that you can pick up with this hydrogen alpha modified camera. Turned out pretty cool and I did a before and after. 30 second track shot ISO 1600. I was using that 24 millimeter lens at f3.2 just to stop it down a little bit to kind of fix the edges of any of the issues from astigmatism and coma. And then I flipped around 180 degrees because we had the Milky Way rising in the Southern Hemisphere with the large Magellanic clouds. So I did a before and after shot of that area and it looked pretty cool. I liked the nightscape aspect a little bit more than just the deep sky aspect when I have that foreground in it. The star soft filter just makes it look a little bit more prominent with the Milky Way and the Magellanic Cloud. So it's a neat little appearance and something that's really easy to carry around and toss onto your lens at a moment's notice. So without further ado, let's go ahead and show you guys some of those before and after shots. All right, guys, now that we're in Photoshop, here's the first image that I captured. Tons of green air glow that night in Chile. It's always spectacular. But again, that modified Sony from Spencer's camera picks up so much hydrogen alpha, which is all this red around the constellation Orion. So again, because there's so many stars when you get away from city lights, it kind of makes it tricky to even see all of Orion. But this was a 30 second shot F3.2 with that Sony 24 millimeter lens and the camera was running at ISO 1600. I was tracking, I had it on a small little portable tracker, kept the stars nice and pinpoint. So this is that first shot, tons of air glow. I just did a gentle edit to make the brights a little bit brighter and to darken the darks and just add a little bit of contrast in general to the image. So before the filter was applied and now after this next image, I put on the filter. So you can really see how all the brighter stars really pop out at you a little bit more. So before and after. You still get a lot of natural colors going on. I did the same exact processing for these shots just to make it consistent. And it seems the filter darkened it maybe just a little bit uh, in this top portion. Uh, but aside from that, this was basically straight, uh, as neutral color balancing as I can make it because I really wanted to accentuate the green air glow and the hydrogen alpha that was going on. So for the second shot, this was a nightscape oriented one. So I just took my camera and I faced it 180 degrees away from Orion. And this is awesome because we have the Magellanic clouds with air glow. Amazing, this is what's called a, the gum nebula. It is a massive, many, many times bigger than a bright full moon in terms of uh, hydrogen alpha emission that's up here and in in that camera really picks it up uh, very well. And then we have the Eta Carinae Nebula and other uh, emission nebulae going on there. So all in all, pretty cool. It's just single 30 second shot, the same 1600 ISO I was tracking and at F3.2. So it kept the stars nice and pinpoint. 
during that 30 second shot with the 24 millimeter lens. So let's do that before and after. Uh, and then now this one, I put on that Nissi filter. And again, you can just see that it darkened the image a very, very small amount, but the color balance stayed the same, which for me is very important. And I did the same exact edits again, before and after to apply it. So the only thing I noticed is a little slight difference in darkness of the image itself. So for me, that's not a big deal because I can easily fix that in post, but makes the stars pop just a little bit more, makes it a little bit more appealing. Uh, you will notice maybe I get a little softening of the landscape itself, but um, it's kind of hard to tell because, well, actually you can see it there, but it makes sense. But you can move the filter up and down to kind of place your line of where the star softening happens. And that makes it a little bit easier. So you're not softening all the image because, well, you could fix it by just blending a filter uh, in a shot without the filter as well, if you wanted to. But overall, I think they look pretty cool. Uh, definitely something I'm going to be excited to post. And of course, having those good dark skies in Chile make this kind of shooting so fun with just super portable equipment. But I hope this gives you guys a little bit of understanding of what can be done with that filter before and after, uh, especially under dark skies where so many stars are visible. This can just add a little bit of uniqueness to your shots. I hope you guys enjoyed the little before and after because I was really impressed, especially under dark skies, because there's so many stars when you get away from city lights that all the constellations end up blurring together. So you really add a little bit of flair and uniqueness to your shots when you add a star filter to them because well, what happens is then those images start to pop more because the constellation, the very bright stars in those constellations start to pop a little bit more. So for me, I think I'm gonna keep it in my kit and especially use it under dark skies. But as always, I hope this was a little bit worthwhile for you guys and if you enjoy the content, Again, don't forget to subscribe, share it with your friends, and stay tuned for more videos. Clear skies, guys. Keep looking up. We'll see you.